God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining the Authentic Word. And I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford. Praise the Lord and mercy and grace and peace and favor of God is with you and in you. You have the favor of God. Wow. We thank God for that favor. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And welcome, welcome. I'm awesomely happy and excited uh, for you today again because we're going to do uh, another uh, topic, I mean the same topic, and we're going to go even deeper into power for purpose. Hallelujah. And you know, on the last program, we talked about how we need the power, what is the number one purpose for the power. And so the number one purpose for the power is for you to become like Jesus. Because without that power, you cannot become like Jesus. And that's why he saved you. Because don't you want your children to be like you? Of course you do. And so God is the same way. And when I say God, I'm talking about the Father. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Word. And so the Word is life. The Word is powerful. The Word heals. The Word delivers you. The Word sets you free. The Word makes you free. And as you activate the Word, if you speak the Word, when you confess the Word, yeah, 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 glory to God, the Word goes to work for you. But if you're saying something other than the Word, that Word does not Whatever else you're saying, it don't have the power. Why? Because that's not the word of God. The word of God is what has the power. Praise the Lord. So God, in all of his goodness and his faithfulness to us, he says to us, look, receive me, receive my power, and there's nothing that you cannot do. You can do all things, he says, through me, because I will strengthen you. Now, that's in Philippians 4.13. So, you, everything you hear me say, it's coming out of this most amazing book. And this book is the Holy Bible. And this program is called The Authentic Word. And the Bible is the authentic word. It is the true, authentic word of God. The Holy Spirit, that power, he had the apostles and prophets and those who took a pen in their hand, those he chose to write his word down as scribes, the, those words are powerful. They have the anointing of God in them. And that's why the anointing is the power you need. It gives you the ability. Yeah! to get anything done that God has called you to do. And he said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, he says, you have a holy calling. And holy means you, you have a calling that makes you one with God, one in purpose, one in plan. And so you've got that power so that you will walk in that purpose and in that plan that he gave you that power for. Wow, hallelujah. That's wonderful. That's amazing. So God says to us, he says, you receive me, I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the power to become sons of God. I'm going to give you the power to, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, say, oh, uh, 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 just speak against anything that you see that needs to be corrected. And you, you correct it. You bring it back to its rightful place. And you don't need to speak anything negative. Why? Because only good can come from speaking the word. Only blessings, only healing, only deliverance, only help, only strength, only love, only peace, only joy, only goodness, only faith. And so you have to have faith. 
And one of the spirits of that power is faith. And another spirit of that power is love. And another spirit is joy. And another spirit is self-control. Now you don't have to get all upset and get crazy and bent out of shape. When someone lie on you or hurt you in a deep way, why? Because you have a spirit of forgiveness. You have a spirit of peace. You, you understand where they're coming from because you were just like that. So as God began to change you and cause you to become more like him, as you mature and activate and cultivate the power that he gave you, well, you won't get upset. He said, you, you won't get mad and angry like that. If you do, you repent quickly. He says, because I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Wow, now we just read that uh, in our last program, and that was 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. So we're going to continue down uh, from there. Uh, so let's go there real quickly, and let me pray for you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come before you once again, thanking you for this privilege and this honor to minister the word of God all around the world. And we just ask you to have your way, Holy Spirit. Do whatever you want to do. Heal people, deliver people, set them free. All that you want to do during this Christmas season, this Christmas time, all of those who are coming back to you, that accepting you as their Lord and their Savior and King and just multiply it. All nations all over the earth, we need you, Jesus, and we celebrate you, Jesus, during this Christmas time. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege and this honor and this opportunity for your word to go forth, for the power of your word to heal people who are sick to deliver people who are in bondage, who are in prisons, and who are bondage to addictions, or they're, they're in bondage because of addictions, or illnesses, or sicknesses, and you are the healer. And you said, by your stripes, they are healed. And they were healed because you paid the price thousands of years ago when you came and you sacrifice everything to come to save us, to make us like you. And so we want to thank you right now for saving us, for delivering us, for healing us. In Jesus' name we pray, Yeshua HaMashiach, amen and amen. And so now we, like I said, we were in 2 Timothy, and we were in chapter 1, and we had started in verse 7, and we came all the way down to verse 9. And let's just reread that again. So according to the gospel of the power of God, and that's God who have saved us and called us with a holy calling. Wow, see that calling? See, he, he, he's the one that calls you to make that confession. His spirit was on you and around you so that you finally got to that point where you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's the only true living God. He's the only God that can save. He's the only God that can deliver. He's the only God that can heal. He's the only God that can bless you so tough that you can't even keep up with all his goodness and his blessings and his glory flowing through and in and out in your life and all the lives of all your relatives and loved ones, your church, your ministry, your job, your career, your whatever. God says, I want you back. Hallelujah. And I have done everything I can do to get you back. And all you need to do is confess me with a sincere heart and say that I'm your Savior. I have forgiven you and washed you and cleansed you and gave you my spirit so that you have the power 
to do all things that I have put in you to manifest. So your destiny, hey, hallelujah. And he says, who have saved us and called us to holy calling, not according to our works. It's not about what all you and I can do with the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has given us. No, 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 no. That doesn't save. That doesn't deliver. That doesn't heal. That doesn't do any of that. Your own works don't get it. I don't care if you built the Empire State Building. I, it doesn't matter if you build the Taj Mahal. If you build every uh, 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 airplane there is, guess what? None of that will save you. No matter how smart you are, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how intellectual you are, whether you, whoever you are, God said, you need me. You need my power, my anointing, my love, my joy, my faith, my peace. See, that's his. He gives it away to us freely. It's a free gift. He gives it to us as a free gift. And he says, but according to his own purpose and grace. Don't you know he gave you that power according to his own purpose and grace? Hallelujah. <laughs> See, he has a divine destiny for you, a divine plan that's so amazing, so much greater than what you've come up with. Oh, my, 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 my. So much more than what you have come up with. That is God's goodness right there. And so that's his mercy. That's his grace. That's his favor. That's his loving kindness. Wow, that's his faithfulness to us. He's faithful. Praise the Lord. And he said, which was given us in who? In Christ Jesus. The only way you can get it, <laughs> the only way you can receive that power is in Christ Jesus. Accepting Christ Jesus before the world even began, he said, it was already set up. It was already set up way before the world began. And what did, who created the world? He did. He created all the planets, all the stars, the moon, the sun, the, the constellations, the galaxies, everything you can see and cannot see, he was the creator of that. And see that, you believe that and receive him who he is all by what? By the faith that he gave you. It's his faith that he gave you for you to believe it. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. So we should celebrate Jesus this month with all that's in us, with all of our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Why? Because it's him that gave us all that too. Don't you know Jesus is the one that has given you health, divine health, healing, deliverance, salvation, strength, wealth, prosperity. Everything came from him. He is the greatest giver. And you know, you've heard people say, you can't outgive Jesus, you cannot outgive God. You can't. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, how much wealth, prosperity, what power you have on the earth, all of that. You cannot outgive God. You cannot outlove God. He's the greatest lover. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is the greatest in anything that you can name. He's the greatest in loving kindness. He's the greatest in goodness. He's the greatest in mercy. He's the greatest in grace. He's the greatest in favor. He's the greatest. He's the most high. He's El El Yon, the most high God. There's no God higher than him. There's none else like him. There's nothing you can compare him to. Wow. And so, can you imagine his spirit he put in you? And you are of the God kind. You've got the God nature in living in you now. And that is the purpose for that power he has given us. Wow, hallelujah. Now let's look at something else. And you know, God wants us to use our power. Well, he tells us what he wants us to use 
out power poor. Now we're going to look at that. We're going to look at the scriptures where he instructs his disciples. This is what I'm giving you the power and the authority for. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke and let's look at Luke chapter 9. And Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 1, he says, Then he called his 12 disciples together, gave them, uh-oh, what? He gave them power. And, uh-oh, you got the power and authority. You got both. Look at it, look at it. Read it for yourself. He gave them power and authority now. So if you are a disciple of Jesus, you got power and you got authority. So why are you settling for far less? Why are you acting like you're helpless and everybody need to have a pity party for you? <laughs> if you are a son of God, a daughter of God, if you're a child of God, there should not be no pity parties. <laughs> you don't need them. You got the victory. He paid for everything for us. So he said, I give you power and authority over what? Over all the devils. Look at that. You got power and authority over the devils. Any devil, any kind of demon that comes against you. And to cure diseases. Uh-oh. All the diseases man can't cure, all the diseases that man can't, you know, the doctors tell you, there's nothing else we can give you. We don't know what to tell you. Go home and die. You know, we can't help you anymore. Da, 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 da. But Jesus said, no, you've got power to be cured. The Holy Spirit is the healer. He's inside of you. So just receive it. <laughs> he said, just receive it and you shall have it. He said, whatever you say, when you pray, believe that you have it, and, and you shall have it. So he says, you can cure diseases. Oh, my. What? Yes. The Holy Spirit is the power in you. Confess it with your mouth. I'm cured. I'm healed totally of that disease. That's what I spoke when I got the virus. I said, I am healed. The first day that they told me I was positive, I said, oh, well, I'm already in the process of being healed. They put me in the hospital, all that. And praise God, I was healed. I mean, I didn't stay in there very long. And I was talking. I had strength. God was amazing. It's an amazing testimony. And he, what else did he do? And he said, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. They're, all of us are sent to preach the kingdom. Anybody can tell their testimony how Jesus called them to a holy calling, just like what we read, and accept that calling, accept Jesus, so that the power of his spirit can come and dwell in you. And you're preaching the kingdom of God. And with that kingdom, you receive eternal life. You have life forever with him in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is already here on the earth. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit living in us. We're the walking, talking kingdom of God. Hallelujah! We're of the God kind. And what else? And to heal the sick. What? Heal the sick. That's what you got the power for. You got the power to overthrow all the devils. You got the power to cure diseases. Ooh, we and somebody's going to say, ooh, apostle just going too far with what she's teaching. No. The Spirit of the Lord says you have the power to what? Heal the sick. Are you in a disciple of Jesus Christ? When you pray for the sick, they shall be made well. Heal the sick. 
start going somewhere and just healing people. Go to where people are sick at. Go on a missionary trip. Go in a hospital. Go, go in a convalescent home. Go. <laughs> Heal the sick. Hallelujah. Preach the kingdom of God. You have a mouth, you can do it. The Holy Spirit says you can do all things through him, through his spirit. Amen. So now, let's look at another scripture. And this is even more powerful. Hold on to your seatbelts. I'm telling you, we're going higher, higher elevation, higher elevation. Purpose for your power. Power for a purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 10, verses 19 and 20. And in Luke chapter 10, he's talking to his disciples about they went on a mission trip. And they went on many mission trips. And it was a lot of them that went. It was a whole group. And so what happened? They preached the kingdom and people got saved. People got healed. People got delivered from all kinds of diseases and sicknesses, all kinds of bondages. They cast out devils out of people, you know? And so that's all done because you have the power living in you and you have the faith. See now, the power works with faith. Without faith, you, you can't do nothing. And he said, it's impossible to please God without faith. Now, that's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. He said, it's impossible because that's how you receive the Holy Spirit, by faith. That's how you got born again, by faith. That's how you receive the power, by faith. That's how you can walk in this power and exercise your authority, by faith. It's all by faith. It's nothing about what you did. It's the work that he does through you and I. Wow. How awesome is that? Now let's look at verse 19 in Luke chapter 10. And it says, Behold, meaning take very close attention to this, people of God and people who are becoming like God, hallelujah. And it says, I give unto you power. There's our word again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Power to do what? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. Wow. You can tread on him. That means anything you're treading on, you're walking on top of it. You, you, the power is walking on top of those serpents and scorpions. What are those? Different types of demonic spirits. You have more power than any demon. Ooh, we. Glory to Jesus. And you know, the enemy laughs at us because he realizes some of us never exercise our authority and our power. Ooh we God wants you back so that he can give you his power so that you can begin to rule and reign in your dominion and rulership that he gave you in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. He said, I've given you authority and power over everything on the earth and every creeping thing and every fowl of the air and everything in the sea, everything. Man, we have power. We have that power and we get that back when we get born again. Hallelujah. He said, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Wow. You don't need to worry about getting hurt because they can't hurt you, because you can't die. You have the power of eternal life living in you, and so you will live forever. And on that note, that's amazing. God is a good God. He's forever good. He's good all the time. He's wonderful. He has done so many miracles, signs, and wonders. We can't keep up with it, 
with all of his goodness, and this is the time, this is the season to acknowledge him, to accept him, to take him back and let him love on you, let him give you your power and your authority back that was given away by your parents from the very beginning. And so, see, he already knew the end from the beginning because the end is also your beginning. Praise the Lord. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time on The Authentic Word. Shalom, shalom.